Three members of the occult club of a senior high school turned up missing while away on holiday. One of them, a girl called Linda, sent her mother some photographs before she disappeared. But the photos were no ordinary holiday snaps. They showed an old dilapidated mansion, an eerie spirit-like creature. When Linda's mother saw the photographs, she engaged the freelance occult reporter, Akira, to search for her daughter. Taking the photographs with him, Akira went to the place the children were last seen, a country town in southern There, he found the mansion. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to a brand new LP. We'll be taking a look at a fairly obscure PS1 horror title known as The Note. Now, it remained in relative obscurity because of its very limited release, but also because of its somewhat odd design decisions. What those are, well, we'll just have to see by starting a brand new game. It's so quiet. Yeah. No sign of anyone around. It doesn't look like anyone has lived here for a long time. The building looks pretty old, too. Do you think the kids were really here? If Linda sent photos of the place, they must have been. But whether they're still around or not is a different matter. I can't get those photos of the spirits out of my head. Me neither. Well, let's take a look around and see what we can find. Now, before we start poking around the mansion too much to find those missing kids, there are a couple of odd, basic gameplay mechanics that we do need to get out of the way first. The primary one is how we determine our health. You can quite obviously tell there's no on-screen health meter, and instead you might notice that occasionally our character will blink. Believe it or not, that is going to be our primary means of keeping track of our health. I mean, even if we bring up the pause menu, we'll see that, for the most part, it's a pretty bare-bones pause menu. We have an execute and record option, and if we go into execute, we'll see, uh, some pretty vague terms. Operate is more or less a bog standard, you know, adventure verb list. Things we can uh, cause our character to do. And, well, you can pretty much assume what is in items. That is our current inventory of things we can use. But still, no real metric for our health. The only other odd bit in the pause menu itself is this record option. Now record is another unique feature of the game, and that's because instead of what most games do, i.e. they use their face buttons for interaction, instead this game, well, it uses the face buttons for certain types of movement, and instead uses the shoulder buttons for interacting. And in fact, you can customize these shoulder buttons to do whatever you want them to do. Now this is an unusual level of interaction and customizability that you probably don't see in most games of this era. The main problem is that you only have four shoulder buttons and, well, keep in mind you probably have up to 16 different possible things you could end up doing with your controls, so 
it's an interesting idea, it's just a bit of a mixed bag. But for now, I think we should be safely able to start exploring, so let's start with this right-hand door first. Where we are greeted with one of the other primary gameplay aspects that the note has, and that is extreme darkness. Now we are able to alleviate that temporarily by using a match, but what we actually want to do to get rid of some of this darkness is... Throw open the curtains. Yeah, this game has a pretty... pretty unique system of lighting that I don't think was very prevalent at the time. And by that extra bit of lighting we can see what appears to be a gun on the wall. Now obviously we do want to get this gun, so if we go and check it really quick via the execute menu, we can hopefully grab it. Though this does show us that there are different, differing levels uh, of light that a room can have. In this case, we could technically open up the other window, it's just there are these lamps on the walls that we can also use our matches on. Though occasionally, sometimes these lamps will be broken. The other thing to keep in mind whenever you want to use a match or one of these wall-mounted lamps for light is that you only have a very limited amount of matches and that the, the lamps will burn out over time. Though it does give an almost pleasant glow to the room. Also, I think it should give us enough light that we can now grab the gun off the wall. And as you might be able to assume by the fact they are giving us a weapon, there is indeed going to be combat coming in the game. First things first though, we do still have two open shoulder buttons, so we want to go ahead and set the gun to one of those. And though it might seem a bit odd, we also do want to set the ammo on another one of the buttons. Because, yeah, yeah, there is no automatic reload in the game. You have to manually reload the shotgun whenever it happens to empty out. So, yeah, I find it pretty good to set the ammo button on one of the shoulder buttons, just so you don't have to, you know, pause every time you're in the middle of combat. For now, though, even though I did manage to light up that lamp, I think opening the curtains is still a pretty good idea. And, well, there is at least some objects of interest in this room. It's just that, well, I don't know. There's really not much to them. You can check the fireplace. And it is indeed a fireplace. It's just, well, there's nothing we can grab in it. So I, I guess for now, we'll just go ahead and head off to the next room. Seems there is a little bit of an infestation problem. You could probably see it scurrying in the dark there. First things first, let's get some light going. And we meet our first enemy, the rat. Now, the rat may not seem like much of a tough customer. It's just that looks can be a bit deceiving. It's dangerous! Let's get out of here! Yeah, there's a couple of small annoying caveats to the combat in the note. First of which is, there's no hit stun. So, even little enemies like this one, li this little rat, can easily kind of stun lock you into losing quite a bit of health, which, considering what we've lost so far, you might notice our field of vision is slightly decreased now, and we are blinking just a slight bit more. So, for the most part, I am going to try to keep our health topped off as possible, because the blinking can be... Kind of cumbersome already. We don't need to make that worse. Yeah, other than our first combat experience, there isn't really much else of interest in this dirty haphazard kitchen, so I guess we'll just go ahead and keep pressing on.
Now, it may not seem very economical to use a match almost every time you enter a room, but it is usually the safest way to go, especially if it's your first time playing. It's good to get your bearings as quickly as you possibly can. Also, if it's your first time playing, it's probably not a bad idea to check any furniture around, because there is a good chance that sometimes there might be something hidden in it. Such as in this broken sideboard here. Where we find a mysterious metal. Hmm. Yeah, that just goes to show that occasionally there will be items hidden away. And as far as I know, pretty much every item you can find in the game is going to be pretty necessary. Continuing on to the hallway, we meet our next enemy. A very small, swift bat. Which we easily dispatched, though... As you might be able to tell, there there's another little small annoying caveat to combat in the game. And that's that there's no real crosshair for the gun. So when you're dealing with very small, fast-moving enemies like the rat or the bat, things can get pretty dire. For now, though, we do have quite a few options of ways to go. few doorways and what I can only assume to be the, the centralized hallway to this floor, along with what appears to be some stairways heading up to the second floor, but for now I want to go ahead and clear out a few more areas on this first floor before we head on up. And for the most part, I'm going to be pretty honest here, I'm going to try to go on the most relatively straightforward path we can. We already meet our third new enemy, but we want to shed some more light on the subject before we engage the, the wolf in combat. Because even though the wolf is a mite slower than the bat or the rat, not only does it take more damage, but if it does happen to hit you, you will take a lot more damage than anything we've had to deal with so far. Taking down that much more weighted enemy, we are able to finish illuminating this room. And by doing so, we have a much clearer view of what appears to be a very bizarre looking altar in the center of the room. Along with on the ground, our first key of the game. Now, for the most part, the key descriptions can sometimes be a bit vague. This one is just called the Mansion Key, and we are in the mansion. It just could probably do to be a little bit more descriptive. But, you know, after that wolf, there's something that is a bit concerning to me, and something that you, as the viewer, might have noticed, and that is... So far, no supplies have really been dropping. So we haven't got any new healing items, we haven't got any more matches, and well, the gun that we picked up only managed to have about, about six shots in it. So, I think if we go look at our available ammo... Down here at the bottom, we'll, yep, we are down to one final bullet, so... Unless we, uh, you might be wondering how we managed to refill on our supplies, and believe it or not, breaking away yet again from other survival horror games in this one, we can just go ahead and leave. And by doing so, we actually head to the nearby town for the mansion, where we can do a couple of useful things, such as go to the hotel, where we are able to pass some time and heal up to full. Or, more useful to us now, we can go to the store. And we are pretty much given free reign to buy any of the useful, expendable, consumable items that we might need throughout the course of the game. 
And since we have just so much money, figure why not, let's go ahead and max out everything. Because, as you can probably tell from the sale option, we might be able to make some money as we make our way through the mansion. Also, we do have an option to save here. For now though, we are going to continue exploring the mansion and hopefully get some more clues about those missing kids. Now we have covered quite a bit of ground now, and in fact we do have access to a lovely map. We can see the rooms that we've gone into, including some doors that we have not explored, including one in this primary foyer area, then I figure we might as well go ahead and enter into. First though, never want to miss opening up a window. Secondly, there was a primary good reason why I didn't go to this particular door first, and that's because we didn't really have stood much of a chance against this wolf without the gun. And it was also another good excuse to head into town and, you know, resupply, considering that we would have only had one bullet, so we wouldn't really have been able to get past this little nasty enemy here. But, in addition to giving us some free light, there is another very good reason you want to try to open the windows, and that's because... Well, the game doesn't always tell you this, but sometimes, by opening up the windows and bringing in the light, you do sometimes eliminate enemies from coming back. Which is definitely something that will happen. But yeah, that unique looking door that we just went through is indicative of being able to head outside and into a different area. Which is probably not very clear here. But yeah, this little canopied outside foresty area is technically in the exterior of the mansion. But I guess we should go ahead and explore this door here, see what waits in store. Oh my, how unusual to see visitors. What brings you here? I'm looking for some people. I see. These children, actually. Have you seen them? Yes, I've seen them. Really? I'd appreciate any information you can give me about them. Hmm. I don't mind telling you, but could you look for something for me, too? Look for something? It's about this size, a small red stone. You'll know it if you see it. If you find that stone for me, I'll tell you what I know about the children. All right. I'll be waiting for you here at this time tomorrow. Don't forget. What an unpleasant person. Yes, but it looks like we're getting closer. I guess. So it seems we might finally be able to get a clue about those missing kids. But in addition to that, we also learn for the first time that there is a real-time mechanic to the game. And that woman is very, very serious about the fact that we need to come back here exactly 24 hours from now. So hopefully you make sure to check your watch and keep in mind the time because... Yeah, you might miss out on some very important story if you don't come back at exactly the scheduled time. Now, the game doesn't explicitly say it, but it's not really a one-to-one -one average, obviously. Instead, it's roughly about 10 real-life minutes to one hour, so 
Even though we don't maybe have a clear idea about the, where that redstone is right now, relatively speaking, we do have plenty of time to try and find it. And I have a strong inkling that it might be up on the second floor, so that's where I'm heading now. And yep, that bat that we killed previously in this hallway has come back. It's just really not worth the bullet, so I'm just going to go ahead and avoid that. Especially considering there's just another bat waiting for us up on the landing here. And we get another taste of uh, the great combat in the game. Kind of had to guess at the sweet spot regarding just where the, uh, the gun is going to be pointing. Still, it's usually a good idea in the more cramped spaces here to get rid of any enemies, especially considering the fact that... Have up to four different doors to choose from and you obviously don't want to be nibbled on the back of the head by a bat while you're doing that. So we got a locked door, another locked door, hopefully third time is the charm here. Indeed it is, namely for the fact that there are no enemies in here. And there is plenty of available windows for us to open up and shed plenty of light into the room. And as you can probably guess from the fact that there is a piece of furniture in here, there is something of interest for us to get. Much like in the sideboard from the first floor, we do find another mysterious metal. Now if we look at the description for the metal, it doesn't give us too much information, though it does call the metal a soul metal. It will be useful for us in the future, just, you know, not right now. Also, while those four, first two doors were locked to us, fourth door is still locked to us. It's just, well, through process of elimination and knowing ahead of time, I do know that mansion key we got is exactly for this particular door. And as you can probably guess, that means there's something very important in this room. You can also tell because, as opposed to most other rooms that we've gone in so far, this one does have quite a bit in the way of furnishings. Got a clock, bookcase with something odd behind it. And we got a lovely desk here. And... Hmm. Painting with uh, some smudges on the carpet underneath it. And they're not just any smudges, no. It appears to be some paint. But doesn't appear to be paint from the painting itself, like something scraped off some paint. It seems to be of an entirely different color. It's just nothing seems to be on the painting itself. And this presents to us our first real puzzle of the game. Now we've already pretty much dealt with wanting to be in as much light as possible. And we do have lamps we can light, it's just this time around we want to do the opposite and get into complete darkness. Because by doing so, we see that there has been some iridescent paint put on the painting itself with what appears to be a combination of directional lines and Roman numerals. And obviously, since this is the first puzzle, puzzle of the game, they do want to softball one to us. And as you can probably guess, those uh, Roman numerals have to do with the grandfather clock here. Now if we go ahead and check the clock, we'll see that it is broken, which means that we should be able to easily manipulate the arms. And to do so, we'll use the turn option, but for now I want to go ahead and assign our action button to, uh, to use the turn. 
mostly for ease of use because yeah for some reason after we set a time it does just kick us out so just seems a lot easier than just bringing up the pause menu for the three times we have to do this but with our final entering of the number four have gained access to whatever it was behind the bookshelf. Hopefully some really nice prize considering uh, we just solved a puzzle. And indeed there is a treasure waiting for us, though we first had to take down its guardian, the ultra dangerous slow moving feral wolf. And for some reason, it still managed to hit me. Are you okay? You're not looking so good. And apparently its body was thrust at me so hard that I have probably managed to take more damage than I have taken from anything else so far. And I guess it is a good example of uh, another time, or another measure, I suppose, of uh, how much damage you're taking when your assistant Angelo will sometimes ring out with a helpful line. But, yep, for all of that trouble, we finally get that mysterious stone that that lady in red was looking for. So I need to make sure and use the check option instead of the open. Now, I can only assume that the fact that it was hidden away and put on some arcane symbol isn't, you know, supposed to yell out, maybe we're doing something horrible. Eh, it's just we really have no other choice at the, the moment, and there's the other problem of... I feel like we kind of solved that a little bit faster than the game expected, because as of right now, we still have... I'm gonna say roughly about 22 hours to spend for the, uh, the scheduled time we're supposed to meet up with the lady in red. Now there are a couple of ways that you can just actively move time forward in the game. One of those is to head to the inn and rest up. It's just, well, that ends up costing about $800 and we're not wanting to be so frivolous right now with our hard-earned coin. Instead, there is another interesting option we can use in the operate menu here, which is standby where we can pretty easily force time forward without really much in the way of repercussion. Also forgive me here because I'm bad at math, so I, I initially only set it forward a 12 hour period. But you'll also notice that the time has passed in the background as well, and things have gotten a little bit darker, which is a, a nice little day-night cycle visual that the game probably doesn't need to do, but it is now time for our scheduled meeting with the Lady in Red. I wonder what this stone is. It feels kind of like there's something throbbing inside it. Yeah, almost as if it were alive. Oh, she should be here any minute. That sounds like her. Did you find the stone? Yes. Well, let me see it. This is the red stone you wanted, isn't it? Yes, this is it. Okay. Now tell us about the children. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs>
fiend. <laughs> Do not venture any further into our world, or it will be the end for you. The children you are searching for are destined to die. Give up on your futile quest and leave this place. If you do not, you shall suffer the same fate. <laughs> So they're alive. <laughs> Too late. Who are you? Me, I am Paolo. I once lived in this mansion. And you are? My name is Akira. This is my partner, Angela. What on earth was that creature? That was... That was Necromedia. Mistress of death. So she really does have power over life? Yes. She's one of a group of evil spirits I've been pursuing. Her soul stone disappeared from its hiding place. So I came to see what was happening. But I see I was too late. Uh, her soul stone? Do you mean that red stone? Yes, the red stone you found. The stone contains her soul. In order to protect themselves from external enemies, these evil spirits place their souls in other objects and then leave them in a safe place. I had hidden the red stone, but... But we came and took it away. I'm so sorry. We didn't realize what we were doing. Ah, uh, don't worry. I'll find it eventually if I keep searching. But what are you doing in this mansion anyway? We're looking for some children. Children? Yes. The ones in this photo. It seems they are missing somewhere in this mansion. Do you know anything about it? That evil spirit seemed to know something, but I couldn't get any information out of her. I saw some children here once. I think they were the same ones. But if Necromedia is mixed up in it, you might as well give up hope now. They'll already be dead. Those evil spirits use the spirits of living humans to nurture their soul stones. And to make new ones if they lose them. If you get involved in this any further, you'll be killed too. You should leave this place now, while there's still time. Forget about the children, and go home. But Necromedia said... The children you are searching for are destined to die. So they must still be alive. You think they're alive, but in prison somewhere, then? I think so. Do you know how we can find the evil spirits? Yes, but... Paulo, we must save those kids if they're still alive. I see. In that case, use this. What is this? It's the key to the cottage out back. There's a room there that is connected to the spirit's castle. But I warn you, if you go in there, 
There's no guarantee you'll come back alive. I understand. Well, be careful. What a strange man. So with that, we meet the Mistress of Death, Paolo, and we get a key to a brand new area, but for now, I think we fucked up enough, so hopefully you will join me next time as we head into the Spirit's Castle, and hopefully get some more clues regarding those missing kids.